Hey guys, I wanted to give you um, some notes on what intermolecular forces are. So before we um, really get into that, I want to talk about the difference between inter and intramolecular because the words are, you know, very similar. Um, so um, we're going to be focusing on inter molecular, but we've already focused on intra. So intramolecular are the actual chemical bonds. So if I were to have like um, water, you know, intra is this actual chemical bond, but inter is, well, what if I have a nearby water? There's going to be, if it's a liquid or a gas, there's, it's not a real bond, but there's an attraction between the negative part of the water of one molecule and the positive part of water of a nearby molecule. So those are called um, inter or IMFs. Um, here's another picture of one, you know, so here's like um, hydrogen HCl. So, you know, this and um, because there's a dipole, you guys remember our dipole arrows? Um, the hydrogen is slightly positive the chlorine is slightly negative, so a nearby molecule has that attraction then from the negative of one and the positive of the other. So um, back to intramolecular forces, so this is the actual chemical bonds. If you were to try to break those, you'd have to actually do a chemical change, which is different than if you try to break an intermolecular or an IMF, now we can do this with physical change. So phase changes like boiling and melting are cases where you're breaking those intermolecular forces. So I have an image for you. So like when you have liquid water, um, this, wa this would be the liquid down here, um, and then it will escape to a gas um, through either boiling or evaporation. So if you think about the water, you wouldn't have to draw it this complicated, but the water, when it's in the liquid, they're all attracted to each other in all directions. But all of these um, IMFs or intermolecular forces have to be broken for them to escape. So it's kind of like they're being tied. They're tied down. And you have to break all their ropes before they can go into the gas phase. So the IMFs are going to be broken with physical change like a phase change. So um, let's talk about, there's three types of IMFs. Um, one of them is London dispersion. Um, another you'll see is dipole-dipole. And then the third is hydrogen bonding. So London dispersion force is um, something that every type of molecule has. And what it is, I have an analogy for you. Um, let me go to the analogy first. So you know how if you've ever been on a tour to look at whales or dolphins or even like the Statue of Liberty, everyone runs to that one side of the boat um, when they see something. You know, So here's the dolphins, but now all of a sudden, oh, there's dolphins over here. Then everyone would run to that side. So the people in the analogy are the electrons. So at any given moment, there may be more electrons on one end of the molecule than the other, which creates a temporary dipole. So you can see in this, um, actually this was a, this isn't working, but <laughs> you kind of, you can still tell though, like there's more electrons over on this side of this neon and less over here, which makes it slightly negative, slightly positive. And then a nearby neon, um, maybe there's more electrons over here, which would give it a partial negative, And then this side would be partial positive. So the IMF is right, here between this neon and this neon. So this happens for everything because the electrons just at any given moment, they tend to um, gang up or, you know, they tend to have more of them on one end, but it's a temporary situation, a temporary dipole. Um, so it doesn't last. So it's not as strong usually, um, but it is something that everything that has electrons has this. So once, here's another explanation, once the electrons have ganged up, 
you know, so like here there'd be more and it's darker because there's more electrons over here and less over here so that this is the negative and this is the positive end of the molecule of two different molecules. This is the IMF. This is the London dispersion force, which we call LDS. So it is the weakest of the uh, types of IMFs um, because it's a temporary dipole. The electrons don't stay, you know, permanently on one end of the molecule and permanently not on the other end. They move really quickly. Uh, but if you have a larger molecule, they do become more significant. So an example of this, if you look at the periodic table, um, let me grab one. <laughs> You guys, if you if you have yours, oh, you know, so in the group with the halogens, like you have fluorine, and if you remember, those guys are diatomic, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. You know, so this iodine is bigger than this fluorine. So what's interesting is this is um, a gas at room temperature. So is the chlorine. The bromine is a liquid and then the iodine is a solid. So the LDFs, because this gets bigger and it has more electrons running to one side and, you know, ganging up, um, because, because there's more of them, the strength of that LDF is stronger when you have more electrons. So it, it's still the weakest of the types of IMFs, but if you have more electrons, it gets stronger. So dipole, dipole, this is the second type of IMF that we're going to talk about. This is when you have a permanent dipole, permanent polar molecule. So remember how, um, like we talked about the trig pyramids with the lone pairs. This is automatically um, a polar molecule. It's always negative up here and positive down there. So if I have another nearby ammonia, then this is the attraction. This would be the IMF because um, this is negative and then the hydrogen part of the molecule on the other is positive. So this is considered an, an IMF, but now we're not talking about an LDF, we're talking about a dipole-dipole. Dipole-dipoles are stronger than LDFs because those poles, the negative end of the molecule, the positive end, stay constant. And then hydrogen bonding is just a special case of dipole-dipole. This is the third type of IMF. Um, because we're talking about poor little hydrogen with only one proton and one electron, and if it's bonded to one of these really electronegative, I call them NOF, because on the periodic table they go in that order. They're at the top kind of right of the table. So these guys are super electronegative, kind of electron bullies. Like they, they're taking candy from a baby. And the baby is the hydrogen, and the candy is the electron. So it's not an ionic bond, but it's really close. So there's a huge um, difference in electronegativities and the fact that hydrogen doesn't have any more electrons that would um, possibly shield the, the one proton it does have from being quite so positive. So there's no inner electrons around that proton to offset its charge. So it's just a very um, extreme case of dipole-dipole. So here's an example of a hydrogen bond. So this poor little hydrogen only has the one proton and the one electron. It's one electrons in this bond here. And um, remember nitrogen is one of those really high electronegative pulling the electron away. So this is the bond which causes this to become very positive. The lone pair of electrons is very negative, so this is the H bond, that attraction of one of these, the hydrogen to the other, to the negative lone pair of electrons. So in summary, um, the LDFs are the weakest of the IMS, but the more electrons, the stronger these do get. Dipole-dipole is now stronger because it's a permanent dipole or difference in charge or polarity that one molecule, you know, is going to be permanently negative on one end, positive on the other. And then hydrogen bonding is just an extreme case of dipole-dipole when you have hydrogen bonded with 
nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine. So I hope that helps.